So, yes. So uh, we talked about how um, the right people were appointed for um, the task, and that way, uh, the apostles actually took care of the issue that came. Right. Uh, otherwise, what happens? A small issue can um, actually become a bigger issue, and particularly uh, nowadays, you know, more than the the early church times, uh, we tend to be multicultural. No matter where we stay, you know, most of our churches uh, have different cultures, and people might have a different upbringing and opinions. So, if at all there is a difference, right? That kind of uh, uh, rises uh, among the people. It's good for the leaders to deal with it in a very wise way and a quick way, so that it does not uh, lead to division or confusion in the church. So once the leaders had done this, what was the result of that? You, know, you see the very next verse there, when they laid hands on the um, uh, these seven men, that the word of God spread. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Wow. So uh, when we deal with things well in the church, and in this case, the administrative aspects, what did it do? Even that brought, brought growth to the church. Okay. So having things in order, solving problems, uh, in addition to preaching, teaching, demonstrating the power of the kingdom. Everything is bringing growth to the church. So again, we, we, we see that God's word spread. So uh, it's amazing. The work of God is continuing. The leaders are serving faithfully. Now, let's go further. Now, this uh, portion of the chapter of uh, chapter six and continuing into chapter seven um, it's more about this individual called as Stephen okay what is the description that we see about Stephen
yeah um sorry about that class there's some power issue here so it keeps getting disconnected anyway uh, so we are back so not to worry i'll just pick up from where i stopped so i was just telling you that god was working miracles wonders signs through everyone not just the apostles so stephen was uh, one such man mm, then what happened is uh, it also seems like he was a man uh, who was uh, like you know he he was able to uh, speak well okay so earlier we saw a person with wisdom so it looks like uh, he went to the synagogue and over there he was able to present his thoughts and also argue uh, for uh, uh, you know his ideas so uh, he at that point it says there arose uh, some from a particular synagogue synagogue of freedmen uh, where you had you know cyrenians alexandrians and those from cilicia and asia uh, they were disputing with St stephen you know in the synagogue you could ask your questions right like anybody can ask a question and then um, uh, that would be answered so there it was a place of discussion and uh, in this case it seems like there was a dispute going on between stephen and these uh, uh, learned men okay uh, and there were people from different regions now stephen was so full of the spirit of god and stephen was such a man of wisdom that you notice here that they were not able to resist it says not able to resist his wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke so uh, the people would have you know it, this was said about jesus also people used to wonder when he spoke they used to wonder what authority you know how is this man speaking like this by the holy spirit so stephen was one such man and because he was so right and they couldn't catch him uh, what did these other men do you know you see that they secretly induced other men or you know it's like creating um, it it's like spreading um rumors and false allegations about uh, an individual to get them so these men could not get him with the words that he was speaking so they go ahead and they tell everybody what do they say they say we have heard him speak blasphemous words about moses and about god okay and that's a lie he uh, they they say that about him and they stir up the people they stir up the elders they stir up uh, it says you know all the learned people the scribes uh, and uh, once the leaders come to know that how can this uh, you know they come to know that uh, stephen has spoken something wrong about moses okay come on we have to um, catch him we have to punish him so they uh, seize him it says okay uh, and they also set up false witnesses against him it's it's so um, uh, you know it's it's really sad right that people will go to any extent to prove uh, a good man as wrong so in this case stephen is stuck in that situation where you know people have uh, put false allegations against him then they continue you know the these false witnesses that they have chosen they continue to say things like oh uh, this man he speaks blasphemous things about the holy place about the law and and also they say that uh, he has also said that jesus of nazareth will destroy the holy place in fact jesus only uh, uh, you know uh, he had uh, said something earlier but it was in a different context but uh, here the people are misconstruing what jesus had said so now they are saying stephen said that he's going to destroy the holy place uh, and uh, that he would change the customs which moses delivered to us now we we need to understand that the jews were very passionate about moses and the law of moses and the customs and uh, all those kind of things and when such an accusation is being made uh, about an individual it was quite serious okay uh, and so you know stephen is being uh, tried now earlier it was peter and john then it was all the apostles and now poor volunteer 
church volunteer is standing in front of the authorities in such a scary situation okay and uh, it's not like he did anything wrong but he is being falsely accused they have put you know uh, they've said that stephen has claimed all these uh, um, things which he has never actually claimed so uh, everyone who sat in the council uh, verse 15 it says um, they were looking at him okay or they fixed their gaze on him steadfastly they were looking at him and you know what his face was shining as an angel okay so even in the trial even in the difficult time that stephen found himself in you know the glory of god was upon him okay and uh, you know his face shining like an angel we could only say that the peace of god the grace of god the glory of god uh, you know covered a child of god in the midst of the opposition how great our god is isn't it uh, anybody in that situation would be scared and this is the last thing you would say about someone who's standing in front of the authorities to uh, um, uh, explain themselves that the face was like an angel nowhere do we read things like that but here is a man you know full of wisdom full of faith full of the spirit of god okay and he is able to speak with with uh, incredible clarity that the wise men of his times could not catch him so they came up with a false allegation and now he's in trouble but how is his countenance full of grace full of god's presence even in that there is such a wonderful testimony about stephen right uh, and that really shows us you know what a walk with the lord he had um, that in, in a difficult time authorities when they are looking at him he is not shaking shivering uh, feeling scared no but the authorities are seeing his face as the face of an angel okay and that was the glory of god upon the face of stephen now let's continue and see what exactly happens in the trial of stephen okay so now he has to answer right he has to answer all these questions uh, false allegations against him he needs to deal with those things okay right so then now the high priest asks him i have gone to chapter 7 okay people have said so many things about you stephen is it true that's how the high priest begins the question now it is said that it's most likely that the high priest at that time was the same high priest caiphas who had also spoken to jesus in his trial so you know things were i don't know if it was the same high priest you would have thought oh that man jesus and his follower is standing in front of me but stephen is being questioned now he has to explain himself another thing i want you to notice is the synagogue of freedmen <clears throat> we saw the regions from where um these these uh, men came from and you noticed it also says silesia okay and it is uh, uh, you know paul the apostle he's actually from silesia so uh, this is what actually happened right that he was part of the trial of stephen so paul is witnessing what is happening to stephen at this point apostle paul what is his uh, status he is still a persecutor okay he is still part of the jewish authorities and he is uh, very much you know uh, passionate about uh, the jewish culture the jewish traditions and whatever he has been taught so he is part of that uh, that synagogue of silesia and uh, uh, he too could have been one of the people who was engaging in the dispute with 
Stephen. Okay, so this is kind of the setting, and now Stephen has to uh, defend himself. Look at this. There's no lawyer also for him to speak on his behalf. But you remember, Jesus said, whenever you're taken in front of the authorities, you don't be afraid. You know, uh, I will give you the words. So Stephen is full of the Holy Spirit, and uh, you know he uh, uh, tries to answer the question. High priest said, "Okay, they said so many things about you, Stephen. What do you have to say?" And Stephen starts. What is the accusation against Stephen? That he is not respecting the law of Moses. He's going against that. Uh, he is uh, claiming that you know he will destroy the holy place. That he will establish new customs. These are the accusations. Now, what does Stephen say to defend himself against this? false accusation so he begins a, a a very sort of a long narration okay and we will see where this narration leads he says brethren fathers listen uh, the god of glory appeared to our father abraham so he starts from abraham and why do you think he is talking about abraham see stephen wanted to show them that he is not opposed to the god of the jews right so abraham is well respected among the jewish people so he wanted to know he wanted to uh, tell them that he respects the scriptures he respects the men of god he respects the jewish culture right and also you notice <clears throat> that he so uh, well versed with the scriptures okay he doesn't really uh, fumble at uh, you know uh, he doesn't fumble with his words or he doesn't uh, he he's not confused about uh, the scriptures he's able to clearly narrate from scripture so he starts from abraham and he says he was in mesopotamia and then he talks about you know how god led him and he came out of his own people uh, and uh, you know he moved to a land that god showed him and god gave him an inheritance uh, and, and you know and he did not have a child and finally you know god gave him uh, a child and god told him that you know he will have descendants and possession uh, so he narrates that whole thing and then he says look after that you all know what happened for 400 years uh, the people of god were in bondage the descendants of abraham were in bondage to another nation uh, and at that time uh, you know you you have um, okay so he 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 goes into a lot of details there okay so i'm not uh, reading through his uh, speech here so he talks about how god gave the covenant of circumcision abraham begot isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day and isaac begot jacob and jacob begot the 12 patriarchs so you you notice he's he's learned he is well equipped with scriptures and he's got the details you know Mes mesopotamia haran uh, 12 uh, 12 patriarchs so he knows what he's talking about okay uh, and then he says that uh, then came joseph right joseph was also in egypt and everything that uh, joseph did there was a famine uh, and there was great trouble but you know through joseph god god saved the people um yeah and uh, uh, even joseph's family so uh, in the famine jacob and uh, his sons they were helped by joseph right so all this happened all this happened so he narrates the entire uh, uh, you know progression of of things and then eventually eventually he comes to moses because what is the accusation that the uh, that stephen is not upholding the law of moses right so that is why he came from abraham went all the way touched on the names of the different patriarchs and now he's come to moses and then you know moses he describes about moses how uh how it came into his heart after 40 years to to free the people of uh, uh, god from the pharaoh and uh, you know moses gets into that and he steps out okay mm, yeah uh, and uh, moses 
like the whole thing the, there are a lot of details how moses fled right he murdered he ended up uh, murdering um, uh, one of the egyptians who was ill treating the jewish person and then he f- uh, uh, flees to midian and how he stays there and how god speaks to moses in the burning bush right uh, uh, and all of that um, and moses responds to god okay so he narrates that experience how he takes off his uh, sandals and god speaks to him uh, and, and you know god says okay now you go i want you to uh, go and uh, deliver god's people so he does that okay uh, and he leads the people of god so uh, ultimately you know what you find uh, stephen narrating is uh, basically he points out and he says that look moses is so well respected he was chosen by god to uh, lead the people of god so here at verse 37 he says this is that moses who said to the children of israel the lord your god will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren him you shall hear so he has come to moses now and through moses see in the context in the jewish context he is trying to reveal christ to the leaders here so through all this he is coming to the point what is the point jesus remember i told you in the early church they were passionate about preaching the lord jesus to uh, the people any setting wherever they found themselves they would preach jesus so he's come to the point and he's saying you are you respect moses so much and you're offended uh, you're accusing me that i am not following the law of moses and i'm preaching against it this is the same moses who said that the lord our god will raise up for us a prophet like me from your brethren so he's referring to the lord jesus christ okay and then uh, uh, he he says how the people they actually rejected even moses they rejected okay they uh, they did not listen to him and they were disobedient to moses so it's it's as if that is repeating again but the same people who claim to respect moses so much the jews they were the ones who first rejected the words of moses they were not willing to obey him right uh, and uh, they did so many things against what moses told them to do you know they set up a calf uh, and they made sacrifices to the idol when moses just you know went away for a little bit of time so he's saying uh, the the kind of um, faithfulness that you are professing to moses and his law um, i don't think the jewish people uh, you know really were that faithful to moses and it is that moses who said that there is going to be a prophet just like him uh, in verse 42 he says then god turned and uh, you know uh, when when they were worshiping these idols and all god turned and you know god spoke to uh, them um, uh, and uh, yeah he kind of talks to them against you know what they were doing okay uh okay so i'll read from verse 44 okay i'll read from verse 44 our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed instructing moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen from our fathers having received it in turn also brought with joshua into the land possessed by the gentiles whom god drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of david who found favor before god and asked to find a dwelling for the god of jacob but solomon built him a house however the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands as the prophet says so the other point they they said that stephen is speaking against the holy place of god okay so now round about he has touched on moses and he's showing his proficiency in the scriptures you know he uh, talks about david and solomon and the temple and then ultimately he comes look what the prophet says basically the prophet says that how can god dwell in a place right a small place so he quotes scripture it says heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool what house will you build for me says the lord or what is the place of my rest has my hand 
not made all these things so he is addressing those same matters one was moses right so he said uh, i am not the one who is unfaithful to moses you and your people they were the ones who did not listen to moses now you are talking about destroying god's house what are you saying okay god you can't limit god in a house so he is bringing that point through moses now finally david okay solomon and he is addressing that matter and then ultimately he kind of gets back at them you know, verse 51 he says you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears wow what a way to address the um, the the count the, the you know like educated influential people and remember the high priest is also part of this uh, panel and he's saying stiff necked stiff necked means uh, you could you could uh, understand that as hard hearted okay uh, not sensitive to receive god's word hard hearted people stiff necked uh, and uncircumcised in heart and ears now uh, we know that these these jews they were so proud about uh, uh, keeping the law especially circumcision so he is helping them understand you know it's like jesus accusing the pharisees you know brood of vipers whitewashed tombs your words your heart uh, is far away right from the words that you speak so th there is hypocrisy there are double standards and that's what he's pointing out here stephen and he's saying uh, you may be circumcised in body but your heart which is what god wants right your hearts and he says years years because the word goes into our years and then it it is uh, um, a part it we must understand it right we receive it into our mind into our spirit through our years but if the years are blocked or if the if the understanding of the heart is blocked the word never goes in so in you could say that he is angry in saying these words but i feel like he's very sad these are the people who know the scriptures who come and argue in the synagogue but they have not understood they know you know abraham and jacob and joseph and moses and all these people but they didn't get the point and that's why he's saying you know stiff necked uncircumcised in heart and ears you always resist the holy spirit so he's saying what god spirit wants to minister through the word you have not received it okay they resisted moses when when moses was trying to uh, uh, you know do the work of god and give the instruction of god what did the people do they kept disobeying they kept complaining you know they uh, I, and you have you know books of the bible where you see how disobedient they were and you know god really had to do something in fact the generation that moved into the promised land was not the generation that moses brought out of egypt because they were so hard hearted and they were so uh, unfaithful to god so he's saying uh, just like those fathers who did not listen he says as your fathers did so do you so it's an angry comment but it's also very sad comment that they were disobedient at least you can be better but you know i notice that even you are resisting the work of god so he says holy spirit here but basically what he is trying to convey to them is the work of god by his spirit what god is doing over the generations your fathers resisted now you are resisting and he says which the prophets did your father or which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute so he's trying to justify himself at this point right he's saying you have put me for trial now how am i different from moses whom you didn't believe or you know some of the others that you could point out and say they also struggled right because your people did not believe them so the prophets they all went through a difficult time with uh, you people and then he says your people they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one so you see he's justifying himself but at the same time you know he never loses the message that the lord jesus is christ so he's coming to that you notice how uh, the apostles they said prince and savior they introducing christ 
right through him there will be repentance forgiveness of sins introducing christ stephen in his most difficult situation standing in front of all these learned wise men he doesn't hesitate to bring forth jesus till now he mentioned every other name but now he's coming to the point and he's saying the just one who's the just one the messiah obviously the jews know who he is referring to then he's saying everyone who foretold the coming of the messiah he's using the term just one here um, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers so he's saying you betrayed the prophets you betrayed moses also right and you uh, did not even listen to the prophecies about the messiah and you have become betrayers murderers who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it so he says how sad you know you boast about the law but you have not kept it what is uh, what is important when we have god's word to obey it right so having the word but being hard hearted towards the word never really living it out you know that is the that is so sad and with that sadness you know he is a kind of uh, using these sharp words stiff necked uncircumcised in heart and ears uh, betrayers murderers right to just point to them and say that you have rejected you have rejected god's word you have rejected god's people you have rejected god's prophets um, which one of them you know did you did you accept easily uh, and even the just one and the prophecies about the just one which is the messiah you have rejected and uh, when stephen was speaking like this you know you you hear then when they heard these things they were cut to the heart you remember we saw this uh, when peter preached when he preached the message of jesus cut to the heart means you're being touched deeply so uh, these authorities also are touched deeply by what stephen is saying but in that case you know they were touched in a positive way and their response was to accept christ but here they it it hit them it impacted their hearts and you see that they gnashed at him with their teeth or uh, you know when when uh, it causes an injury somebody is speaking the truth and we can't bear it uh, and and uh, because we are not able to receive it we respond with hatred we respond with bitterness anger right that is the response that stephen is getting here so they gnashed at him with their teeth or they were so so angry uh, you know angry enough to destroy stephen because what is he what has he just explained he said your accusations are false who are you to accuse me you your fathers you are the hypocrites right let i i have not come to put down the law of moses i have not rejected moses moses and the prophets were the ones who talked about jesus basically stephen is saying he didn't use the name jesus but he said the just one and you have rejected all the prophecies about him but i am following right i am listening even though you are listening you are not receiving it so he is pointing out very clearly that their accusations against him are false and that he knows very well he knows the scriptures very well and these are the same scriptures that are pointing to jesus in whom he believes so he is very bold about it and he has justified himself in a very scholarly intellectual right uh, uh, eloquent way and the people who are listening to him they are so angry because he hit the nail on the head each time so ultimately he is saying i am completely justified your accusations are false i am not the one who is at fault you are the one who is at fault and you are at fault against god you resist the holy spirit and the work which the holy spirit is doing so they are so angry and let's see what happens after that so from verse 55 so when they were angry and reacting to uh, uh, stephen in this way you notice stephen how was he giving these answers 
so beautiful you know you read full of wisdom full of the holy spirit again it says full of the holy spirit stephen is mentioned you know in these passages excuse me and you don't see like in every other place stephen being mentioned but whatever is mentioned about him uh, it's so commendable uh, that he really seems like that faithful child of god who is uh, full of wisdom and led by the holy spirit so again it says about stephen but he in the midst of this anger and uh, mind you if you imagine the scene you have all these influential big men around you anything can happen to you but in the midst of that his face is like an angel he's giving them a very clear explanation and again it says full of the holy spirit what does he do he gazes into heaven and saw the glory of god and jesus standing at the right hand of god and said look i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing at the right hand of god okay so he is so connected so connected to the the work of the spirit and the holy spirit at that moment right uh, it, it, it has completely like uh, um, taken over stephen and god gives him a vision right god communicates through dreams through vision so stephen is having a vision at that point and in this vision you know he sees the heaven is opening god's glory is there and jesus is standing at the right hand of the father so you know it is said about uh, this explanation that jesus is seated at the right hand of the father that's what we read in the in the bible but stephen sees jesus standing okay and uh, standing is a is a symbol is a sign of honor so we all know what happens after this right that stephen uh, is actually martyred so when jesus is standing it's like god honoring a child who has been faithful to him okay uh, and it's amazing like in the midst of persecution sometimes you wonder how does god respond when his children are going through trials and persecutions and you notice jesus is standing in that vision looking at stephen going through the tough times so god is god has not forgotten us jesus has not forgotten you know men and women and children of god who go through difficult times in fact he is watching he is looking and no longer does it say he was sitting but he was standing in honor of those who go through persecution right it's just uh, so heartwarming to think that god can honor uh, people who go through trial right so it's amazing it's amazing so god gives him that vision when he's just sort of you know uh, a, a little away from his death so jesus honors stephen and you think about stephen you know what would it have done to him to see a vision of jesus you know, proudly looking at him more boldness right no wonder it says that his face shone like in an angel it was shining like an angel because he's he's right with god he's in fellowship and communion with god even at that time right uh, and it's really uh, beautiful so let's move on verse 57 these people however so what's happening between god and stephen we understood now what is happening among the people they have uh, completely you know that that mob uh, uh, mentality against stephen they already spread false accusation and false witnesses right and now with stephen's explanation they are angry ready to get him and it says they cried out with a loud voice they stopped their ears they couldn't bear the truth and they ran at him with one accord again one accord but for the wrong reason here together they went against him and they cast him out of the city and stoned him right so this is the martyrdom of stephen how sad how sad that he is speaking the truth but what did he get for speaking the truth he was killed but before the death of stephen god gives him that peace 
and God ministers to his heart and says, look, whether they listen to you or they don't listen to you, I am proud of you, right? So Jesus is standing at the right hand of the father as if to bless Stephen. And even God knew what he would go through. And then, uh, so they killed him basically. So they took him out of the city. They stoned him, it says. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. So remember I told you, Cilicia is the place from where Paul came. And in, right now he's still Saul. So it is possible that uh, Paul the apostle was kind of the leader of the uh, the uh, killing of Stephen. Okay, so Paul has witnessed the wisdom, right? The boldness, the courage, the the stability, okay, uh, and the the commitment of Stephen. He has seen it. Uh, and, and, you know, that could have, obviously, you know, it says cut to the heart. And it, it definitely must have impacted Paul at that time. So once this person, Stephen, was killed, they laid his clothes at Saul's feet. So Saul led this, this whole, um, uh, you know, the, this whole trial against Stephen. And they stoned Stephen. As he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Who do you remember? Just like Jesus, right? Jesus said, Lord, take, take my spirit. Okay. Uh, and what a... I mean, I, I, even for me, it's hard to understand how uh, when, you know, you are being treated so badly, you are stoned, okay? Uh, forgive them, Jesus said. Forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Full of the Holy Spirit. See, the fruit of the Spirit, long-suffering, right? And maybe God gave Stephen that understanding that this is a spiritual battle. People are fighting against you, but people are not the enemy. Satan is the enemy. So Stephen had that understanding and he says, God, please don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, charge them. Same way, what Jesus said, forgive them. Please don't charge them with this sin. What is the sin here? Sin of rejecting the gospel, sin of uh, murdering a child of God. So he says, uh, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know at this point how somebody can say, uh, you're going to die and these people are, are killing you. They have stoned you. You know that you will not make it. In those last few moments, how many of us will say, okay, God, don't, don't hold this against these murderers. Would we ever say that? It only shows what a work of the spirit was done in the life of Stephen. And he's actually saying that, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And notice here, it says fell asleep. And this is the promise. First Thessalonians talks about it, you know, that when a believer dies, it's temporary because we experience physical death, but the spirit and the soul live on. Okay. And Paul said that when I am absent in the body, I'm present with the Lord. So it was as if Jesus was standing up there and saying, Stephen, don't worry, I'm ready to receive you. If Even if you die, like you're going to die right now, but you come straight into my presence and I'm waiting for you. And um, I don't know. I don't know if he will ever know what kind of a welcome. Stephen received into heaven because being absent in the body is what? Being present with the Lord. So Jesus was standing upright. So uh, we are ready to receive our guests at the door when they're coming. So I'm sure Jesus received him with open arms. You know, a persecuted, martyred child of God who witnessed so beautifully for God all along, especially in the end.
right so uh, I, i mean for me it's even hard to teach this particular chapter but any thoughts from your side anything to add anything to uh, to share any questions i think it'll be good to just uh, address that hmm okay i see one question here in the chat by manu and she says early church was very powerful they were filled with the holy spirit and they received god's power question is in these days why people are not like early church why people is not very powerful like early church peter paul <sighs> it uh, depends on uh, you know uh, what exactly you're asking manu if you're asking me whether the holy spirit is working and people are moving in signs wonders miracles i think it's still true it's still true there are a lot of people who are moving in those things it's just that we don't hear much about it but yes you know the kind of uh, uh, revival that we want to see uh, I, i think we should pray for it manu and it can happen again and again and again we know in church history that there have been many times where such revivals have actually taken place okay so we need to pray we need to ask god that we want to see like the early church that boldness that courage and all that yes ma'am yeah sure 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 yes okay aran heart touching whatever stephen yes very true very true aran it's uh, i don't know <laughs> it's uh, like you can't you can't just read it without feeling right what he went through and uh, and today there are so many people going through persecution and we really see the heart of god you know god is not god has not forgotten us god has not forgotten those who are going through a persecution for preaching the gospel and doing the right thing right and those who have died and one more thing you notice here in uh, the lives of the apostles right i think it was only john who died at a good old age all the other apostles they they were killed you know they were tried and they were hung and they were beheaded and they were you know persecuted really the way it says right witness martyrs even unto death the early church and the apostles they carried that kind of boldness that kind of determination commitment to the gospel it was not just about okay let's do church let's have you know a gathering let's do it like this let's do it like that let's have a fun time the commitment is much more than that what if i die for preaching this truth i'm ready to die it's you you see that commitment in the early church right and that's the kind of witness that came about because of the holy spirit so even today we can have that commitment and where does it come from it comes from the holy spirit of god okay so let's rely on the holy spirit yes yes yeah and by the holy spirit we can forgive and that's what we saw stephen do in the most difficult time in his life okay all right class i think we are up uh, time is up so let me just say a quick word of prayer and then you can move on because i know even you don't have time okay let's pray Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this time, Lord. And Father, I I commit the class into your hands, and we thank you, Lord, for your Spirit that ministered the truth about Stephen's life to us, and help each one of us, Lord, to grow in our love, in our commitment, and like Stephen, Lord, to be filled with the Spirit, full of wisdom, Lord, full of faith, and Lord, help us to glorify you, Lord, throughout our lifetime. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we commit every uh, everything else uh, that is to uh, take place today into your hands, Father. Uh, bless us father in jesus name we pray amen 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 okay okay class please feel free you can leave <laughs> go ahead the next class let's meet again uh, next week thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you bye bye bye